I'm Dr. Dora Victoria. And this is George. Today, we are going to be discussing autonomic negative thoughts. Identifying and dealing with these thought patterns are a way for us to cope with anxiety and depression. I have a video discussing the diagnosis and treatment of depression here, but we will be discussing more behavioral therapy in this video. Cognitive behavioral therapy is a way to change our thoughts or beliefs and attitudes that may lead to emotional distress. This can be problem solving and may include family or group therapy. One way to do this is by targeting our thoughts. Maybe this is a thought pattern of situations, perfectionism related, an idea that we have about the world or the future or perhaps ourselves that may not necessarily be true. Having a sounding board like a counselor can be really helpful in identifying what is or is not true. And even if we do not have a good experience with one counselor, that doesn't mean we would not have a positive experience with a different one. Not all personalities go together well. Another way cognitive behavioral therapy works is by targeting behavior. Things like sleep, exercise, or pastimes that bring a sense of enjoyment or sense of accomplishment and ways to improve our social skills or our involvement in social situations. I'm gonna share this next bit because it is quite interesting what we're able to do with technology these days. These are some images of single photon emission commuted tomography, and it is identifying areas of the brain that are being activated. So here we see these healthy brains, all parts of the brain are being activated, fabulous. However, when individuals are depressed, we notice that parts of the brain are just not being activated. There are some areas that are working too hard, and some areas that are just not working hard enough. If we think about our brains in this way, we can help take away some of the stigma of using medication to help turn on areas of the brain if they're just not working well. Sometimes people need a little medication boost to get those parts working. Otherwise, just learning some coping skills like we'll talk about today can be good enough. Our positive thoughts are things that give a positive radiating attitude, a sense of well-being, and draws others to connect with you. Negative thoughts makes you feel gloomy and dismal. Perhaps this has to do with regret of the past and makes us feel anxious about the future and feel unsatisfied in the present. All of these negative thoughts make it hard for us to enjoy life. And we can be pessimistic that good things are not going to happen and lead us to be more isolated and alienated from others. We know that these negative thoughts work on our brain to cause irritability, moodiness, and depression. Some of these thoughts include, you never listen to me, you don't like me, the situation is not going to work out, something bad of course is going to happen, you don't care, I should have done better, I am a failure. Lie detectors test our stress response, temperature, heart rate, blood pressure, increase in breathing rate, muscle tension, and amount of sweat in the hand. If you are asked if you took the cookie from the cookie jar and you took the cookie, you are going to get that stress response if you say you didn't. If you did not take the cookie, your body is going to relax. Your body reacts to all thoughts and not just truths or lies. Likewise, when we have the sad, upset thoughts, negative chemicals are released in the brain our muscles are tense, the heart beats quicker, hands may sweat, and we can feel dizzy. On the flip side, when we have these happy, hopeful thoughts, a positive chemical release causes our muscles to relax, our heart beats slower, our hands are dry, we breathe a little slower. Perhaps you have a favorite pet. Just thinking about them can make you feel comfortable and cozy. Think of your body as an ecosystem. The thoughts influence how the body feels, and we can feel this physically, not just our emotions. We can get headaches, stomach aches. On the other hand, when I think about my cat nutmeg, I certainly feel very cozy indeed. If you think about bad news, you can feel down. What kind of ecosystem do you want to cultivate? One negative thought can be like pollution, disrupting our normal cycle. Just like we want to be good stewards of our environment, we want to be good stewards of our own bodies. I want you to start noticing when you have negative thoughts, 
talk back to them, correct them. If you do not challenge the negative thoughts, your mind will believe it and your body will react. Think about your friends. Are there some that are more upbeat and others that are doom and gloom or complain all the time? Sometimes it is easier to recognize this in others, but it is helpful to start recognizing this in ourselves. We are going to start challenging some of our thoughts. Some thoughts are automatic and some are intentional. Some of our thoughts are not always true and thoughts can lie to us. We want to examine them to see if they help or hinder us to be successful. We can be intentional with our thoughts, choosing to think the good ones to feel good. Or we can choose to think bad ones and feel miserable. So you know what's coming. We're going to go through the different kinds of autonomic thoughts. We'll call them ants. And you bet we'll be tackling some of our own at the end. Our first ant is always or never. You know someone who always thinks in extremes? When we start using these words always and never, is it realistic 100% of the time? Really? To think no one is ever going to call me again? Is that true? No. At the bare minimum, you're going to get a spam call. Or maybe a boyfriend or a girlfriend is always yelling at you. Maybe they only yell sometimes. The thought that your boyfriend is yelling can make you feel sad. If they are in fact always yelling, you might have a different problem though. Or perhaps I'm always inviting people over. No one ever invites me over. Is that true? Probably not. Maybe it's not as regular as you would like, but I'm sure at least once in your life, someone has invited you somewhere. Our next ant is focusing on the negative. How often do your friends complain and how does that make you feel around them? And do you want to be around them? Or would you rather be around someone who's not so doom and gloom? What kind of person do you want to be? So when I'm working nights in the hospital, I can complain. I have long hours. It's lonely. I'm there all alone. I never see daylight. Or I can change those thoughts around. I can be productive because I'm not at home. I can stay on task because people don't bother me. There's not enough action going around. And I get to see some great sunrises and sunsets on my commute to and from work. Fortune telling. Are you a clairvoyant? Do you really know what is going to happen? If you're predicting the worst possible outcome, you probably can do something to make that happen. If you are expecting things to be bad when you get home and you are angling to get into a fight, what do you expect is going to happen? Now, working in the emergency room, it is good to predict the worst possible outcome so you can check and make sure that that is not happening. But in pretty much every other situation, let's try and be optimistic. Mind reading. Do you know what people are thinking about that slight at the cash register? Was it really because you look a certain way or are attired in a particular manner? Or is it because the individual working there was having a bad day, is broke, and is unsure how they're going to get food on the table for their seven children? Do you really know? That negative look from someone, maybe they're just constipated. I really do think most people are too self-involved to really care about anyone else. No one is going to care that your t-shirt is on inside out. And if you do not know, ask clarifying questions rather than guess. That being said, some people are not as comfortable asking those questions. For example, I have one family member, loves to talk, loves to ask questions, bordering on the excessive sometimes. Another family member was brought up and punished for asking questions. So I know it can be hard, but there has to be a healthy balance and learning to ask some questions to get clarification can make a big difference on how we perceive the world. Our next ant is thinking with your feelings. I want you to ask yourself, is there evidence for why I feel this way? Are you believing your negative feelings about yourself without question? This is usually dependent on our memories and experiences from the past. Say a boyfriend or girlfriend breaks up with you and you feel like you will never have someone to commit to a relationship and you're never going to get married. Ask yourself, is this true? This was one experience. Or can you see yourself happily married in the future? 
Today's culture puts so much emphasis on emotion. It is important to recognize that you feel a certain way, but also to look at why and if it is valid. You feel like a failure? Okay, you did bad on one test, one semester of school, one presentation at work. Is that your total track record? Did you really devote the time you needed? Is there something that can be changed so that you can have success? Our next ant, beating yourself with guilt. I should have, I have to, I should have studied more. I should have spent more time with my grandma before she died. I have to organize my messy desk. When these thoughts become a pattern, we make ourselves feel miserable. It is one thing to say this to ourselves, but what about a plan of action? If I did not do well in the test, why? Can I spend less time browsing through Instagram and spend more time reviewing my notes from the day? But not less time with Dr. Or Victoria. Hit that subscribe button below. Maybe I did not spend as much time with my grandma before she passed away. Is there another relationship that I want to invest in? Our next ant, labeling. We apply labels to ourselves and others. Things like jerk, arrogant, irresponsible, failure, slob. Do you ever call yourself these things? You can start to see yourself through this lens and limit what you can and cannot do because of it. What about applying this to others? Oh, that person is a talker and I do not need to go near them. Maybe they really do have hidden listening skills that were not apparent right away. Or when we think someone is a jerk and we can't interact with them reasonably. We prevent ourselves from having successful social interactions and even friendships. Our next is personalization. The world revolves around me and every event and every occurrence is directly related to me. I did not get a text message from some friend or boyfriend this morning and it was because they were mad at me. That clerk at the grocery store, she had an attitude. I must have done something to offend her. If there's a season of isolation, maybe friends did not call and there can be sense of abandonment. Maybe someone just got married and friends and family may not know how to deal with that. And with it, there can be a sense of loneliness. My friends used to hang out with me and call me. They're not doing that anymore. Everyone has their own junk that they're dealing with. And just because you may perceive an aspect of frustration or sorrow from another person does not mean that it's directed at you. So we have arrived at our last end, and this is blame. If only you had done something differently, I would not be in this situation I'm in. It is your fault and I am not responsible. When we blame others, we become powerless to change things. It hurts our personal sense of power. My parents fed me bad food as a child. It's not my fault I'm obese. Good golly, you're a grown person. Who writes that grocery store list? On a more sensitive note, I realize that weight loss is challenging, but still, if you're still drinking soda pop, I'm sorry, but you have work to do. Go call your family doctor. We got lots of things to help. Or maybe it was not my fault that the teacher gave me a bad grade. I did that assignment. Maybe you handed something in, but did you proofread? So take your accountability back. Stop blaming others or circumstances and look at right where you are right now. Today is a new day and there is always room for change. There is always hope. Okay, those are all of our ants. Let's review them quickly. And if you like, you can join me in doing a little bit of an exercise at the end. The always thinking ant, always, never, no one, everyone, every time, everything. Focusing on the negative, only seeing the bad in the situation and not the positive areas for growth. Fortune telling, expecting the worst possible outcome in situations. Mind reading, believing that you know what the other person is thinking, even if they haven't told you. Thinking with your feelings, believing any feeling without questioning whether it's true or not. Guilt beatings, beating ourselves up with things like I should have, I have to, I must. Labeling, attaching a negative label to ourselves or someone else. Personalization, does the world really revolve all around you? And finally, blame, blaming someone else or circumstances 
for our own problems. So let's feed that anteater. I'd like to encourage you to write it down. You can do it in your phone or on paper. But when you have a negative thought, try and squash it. Let's give it a try. Get your phone or a pen and paper to write out some autonomic negative thoughts. I bet going through the ants, you can already identify the type of irrational thoughts that you have been having. Identify your species, write it down, and then you are going to replace that thought with something positive. We are going to squash that thing. Or if you are an insect collector like myself, uh, grab a jar with some ethyl acetate and suffocate that sucker to pin later at your leisure. It is nice to admire our handiwork and the triumphs in the face of adversity. But if you really do want to collect some insects, I know a great book that is perfect for the entomologist in your life. Now for some examples. You never listen to me, always thinking. I get frustrated when you don't listen to me, but I know that you have listened to me in the past and I know you'll do it again. The boss doesn't like me, mind reading. I don't know that. Maybe she's just having a bad day. Bosses are people too. I'm stupid, labeling. Sometimes I do things that are not too smart, but I am not stupid. Thank you for joining me today, my healthcare team. George and I are going to have a little chit chat about the ants that we need to work on and we'll encourage one another. I hope you'll join us next time. Bye-bye.